pimped up cars. And then I realised that uh, actually it was a pretty um, good career option to do drug dealing. <laughs> you see, uh, I know this is hard to believe, but I went to university in the 80s and you're probably thinking, well, that was three years of constant sex and constant drugs. But unfortunately, and then it, that wasn't the case. I mean, there was no drugs and only marginally more sex and, and a serious case of repetitive strain injury. <laughs> you see, Hale's also only two miles down the road from Withenshaw, and everybody else that will stand up here will tell you just how tough Withenshaw is about the crime and the violence. Um, but in reality, uh, Hale's not dissimilar. You see, it's a, it, people think it's going to be a mirror image of uh, Withenshaw, but actually the people, the criminals in Hale, are just better at it. They're more successful. <laughs> <laughs> they, they think bigger. <laughs> and they're just more practised in their art. So you see, they're not worrying about... Uh, they're, they're, they're smuggling platinum bars in from Europe. They're not nicking Mars bars from the corner store. <laughs> right? They're going down... For, for, for bringing in lorry loads of, of uh, mobile phones and evading the VAT on it, they're not nicking the, the, the Hale school kids' iPhones around the corner. <laughs> see? So, and, and I am also here to tell you that crime does pay. Because <laughs> it does, it definitely pays. Because if you look at the people that live in the biggest houses in Hale, you look at the ones that drive the fastest cars, they are the biggest crooks of them all. But, by which, of course, I mean the, the lawyers, the ones that are actually represent, representing the criminals. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other thing is that we actually, strangely enough, have the oldest solicitor in the world living in uh, Hale at the moment. In fact, he, he retired last month, age 112. Well, I mean, that was how old they calculated he was by looking at the number of hours he charged for. <laughs> <laughs> His birth certificate said he was 61. <laughs> so, yes. And uh, obviously, the, the mixture of uh, professionals and criminals has also meant that Hale has recently opened up its own lap dancing bar. <laughs> and, uh, but unfortunately, the middle-class parents are very worried. They're worried that their children might even end up on the same bus as the lap dancers. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm sure they won't. I mean, there's a couple of reasons. Firstly, if you're a successful lap dancer in hell, you will not be getting on the bus at night. <laughs> so you won't. You'll be getting in your BMW, you'll be driving back to Manchester. You see, I mean, what, what do they think? They think, what do they think they're going to do? They think they're going to get on the bus, that then they're going to... Listen to a little bit of music, maybe on the bus, background music on the bus. They're then going to see the poles in the bus there. <laughs> <laughs> and then going to dance. <laughs> 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 and then ask all the passengers to stuff super safe return tickets down their bras. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, is it? So, <clears throat> yes. Yeah, so, anyway, well, uh, it's unfortunate. It's, it's confession time now. Um, please forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I used to be a banker. Oh. <laughs> Well, I, I, to, my, to my credit, it was actually a time when banking was significantly more popular than it is at the moment. I mean, I think if I told you that I would, that I'd probably get a better reception if I told you I was Osama Bin Laden's love child. <laughs> and uh, obviously, a lot of the bankers are now being made redundant. And uh, what's happened recently, I don't know if you read it in the papers, that they're now starting to use redundant bankers for the experiments at Manchester University rather than the white mice. <laughs> so, did you? So, yeah, they said there are three main reasons for this. They said the first one is obviously there are now more redundant bankers than there are white mice. <laughs> they said the second reason was obviously at the end of the experiments they find the bankers can give much better feedback. <laughs> But the third and the most overriding reason is they find the staff don't get so emotionally attached to them. <laughs> anyway, these days I'm a financial advisor. I mean, it's a, it's a bit like a banker, but just slightly less embarrassing to my children. <laughs> to explain what their father does for a living. And the people I deal with are the rich and famous people of Hale and Manchester. And uh, the good news is that they're, they're no happier than you or I, but, but I would say that they are miserable in significantly more comfort. <laughs> <laughs> and they're often on their second or third wives or husbands, and uh, so what my job is, always, number one, is to find out how rich they are. So what I do is I, I, I look at them and I look, how old are they? How ugly are they? How fat are they? <laughs> And then what I do is look at their partner and work out the gap. <laughs> the 
the richer they are. And I've got to say, sir, you must be absolutely loaded. <laughs> absolutely. Listen, we definitely ought to speak afterwards. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't forget to bring your wife either. <laughs> right? And in fact, to be perfectly honest, the whole, what an affluent audience overall. <laughs> Who would have thought? So, yes. So, and uh, a lot of the advice I, I give is tax advice, as I'm sure you'll be aware as a financial advisor. And, and I often say that, uh, suggest to people they ought to move funds between husbands and wives for tax benefits. And I, I'll explain the technical details later to you. But, um, but and, and what you can do is you look at someone and, and he's thinking, shit, I wonder if she knows that I'm shagging that girl down at the gym. Because <laughs> if she does, I'm knackered. And if I don't give her the money, then she is going, she's definitely going to know that I'm shaking that girl down the gym. Whichever way, I'm not getting that money back. I just can't win. And she's thinking, I wonder if he, I wonder if he knows that I know that he's shaking that girl down the gym. Because I do. And he's got to give me that money. Because if he doesn't give me that money, then he's going to know that I know that he's shaking that girl down the gym. Whichever way, I'm getting that money, and he's not going to get it back. And anyway, he obviously doesn't realise that I'm shagging his best friend. <laughs> anyway, so I've, I've got another confession now, and that is I've not been very well recently. Oh. So, oh. Yeah, wasn't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that it? <laughs> so I've been, Ill, I've been ill recently, and uh, what it meant is I had some time off work, and I even ended up watching daytime TV. I mean, I even watch the Jeremy Carl show, and I'm now convinced that that's uh, sponsored by the government Get Back to Work scheme. <laughs> what I did find out was that I'm owed £4,532.61p, and but, but I'm not sure whether it's just for the sheer mental torture of watching daytime TV, or whether it's because I've been missold something. <laughs> and who's taking out those Wonga loans? 4,214% APR. I mean, it used to be understandable. If you remember, it used to be the smallest thing on the advert, didn't it? And I used to consider it something like a free eye test. But these days, it's the biggest thing on there. I mean, the criminals of hell and with them short, even the lawyers, even they can't do as well as that. Anyway, uh, it's time to go now, and uh, I've got to go. As I said, I'm, I'm not quite well yet. I'm still suffering from something called CDO. Um, it's like OCD, but in alphabetical order. <laughs> I mean, no one's going to go and organise those beer bottles, are they? Labels facing out. On their, they're not going to organise themselves on their own. Um, especially alphabetically, and best by date. Anyway, uh, you've been a slightly above average audience, and I've been Simon Boo. Thank you. Yeah!